We'll be the ultimate family. A family of three joined together in one body. <laughs> Ah, genetics. This is the place where dreams come true and abominations in the eyes of God are born in the same day. As a geneticist, your primary job is to research genetic mutations and hand out fancy superpowers to people, like a biological counterpart to the roboticist's mechanical augmentations. Geneticists have access to gene tech consoles and scanners. These devices can, with enough patience, reward you with superpowers, crippling disabilities, or just amusing mutations. When you initially open up the console, you'll see just one link to click on, Research Menu. The Research Menu has pages that show possible research, research that is currently taking place, finished research, DNA samples of all the crew, and other things. Find your name, click on some of the grayed out mutations, and find out what they do by clicking Research Required. Each mutation only needs to be researched once, and it's conducted by spending research materials, which are slowly regained over time at one material every few seconds. Once the research finishes, see if there's anything you'd like to activate. If there is, create an activator for each mutation, click on yourself with the activator in hand to use it on you, and then click on the console with it to redeem it. Each activator redeemed gives you materials, a random chromosome, and a free unlock for the code minigame. In addition, every two fill DNA activators turned in will also reduce the costs of all research tasks, including mutation research, by one. Then, look up someone else's DNA for genes and do the same. It's no fun if only one person gets all the cool superpowers, and the gene nerds who only activate their own mutations are the nerds other gene nerds bully for lunch money. Your fellow geneticist is perfect since they're usually close by and willing to step inside your lab and get their genes activated. If you're the sole geneticist on board, just pick anybody you'd like. Unfortunately, you can't alter the code of a DNA sample or remotely activate genes while the person you're viewing isn't in the scanner, so you'll probably have to call them in your lab. As you're working, steadily make your way through the research upgrades for your equipment. Research starts at Tier 1, with just radiation emitters and gene sequence checker available. But as you research more mutations and buy features and complete tiers of research, more and more of the listed items become available. One of the first and really most useful upgrades you can unlock is Gene Booth. With this upgrade, you can, for a modest material cost, sell genes through the public gene booth, meaning you can distribute mutations without having to invite people into your lab or actually physically interact with them. Great if you're busy with other subjects or don't feel particularly sociable. Plus, other people can get their genes with far less waiting time and without having to worry if the person giving them is going to kill them. The money used to buy a gene is added directly to the research budget. Once you research DNA injectors and mutation storage, the real fun of genetics begins. At this point, you can store desirable mutations from your test subjects, combine them with other mutations, and then use injectors to give these mutations, even to those who don't have it in their genetic potential. But fiddling with genes isn't free. Every time you use your active powers, there's a risk that your powers will horribly backfire, causing a bad thing to happen. The chance you avert this and successfully use your powers is called genetic stability. You start out with 100 genetic stability, meaning a 100% success rate. And if you are injected with mutations not in your genetic potential, this number will decrease or increase by a set amount, depending on the mutation. Typically speaking, the more powerful the mutation injected, the bigger the stability penalty. But some genetic mutations, usually the debilitating ones, can actually increase your stability instead. So before you go around injecting people, you ought to stabilize the gene with a stabilizer chromosome. Chromosomes are modifiers that can be spliced with existing mutations to improve or alter their abilities. You can sometimes get them from turning in filled DNA activators. Each mutation can only be spliced once, at either the potential or, if applicable, the stored DNA mutations menu. But the modified mutation can be stored and applied multiple times. 
Before a chromosome can be spliced, they must be marked for splicing first through the stored chromosomes menu, which is accessible through the research menu. Activating mutations from your potential pool doesn't affect stability at all. It only happens with injected mutations. In other words, stability loss really only occurs with DNA injectors. DNA activators, by their very nature, do not incur stability penalties since they can't activate mutations that aren't in your potential. Once in a while, check up on cloning. If you see any bodies there, scan them and try to clone them. You can leave after you start the process. Most maps have some way to allow the clones to leave cloning if they don't have access. Everyone in medical is expected to man the cloner, but many maps prod genetics in particular into it by having genetics be within viewing distance of cloning. It's quick and easy. The cloner has an advanced genetics analysis option that you can enable at the cloning computer. When enabled, the cloner will copy over any active genetic effects the person had when they were scanned, so people don't have to regain all of them after getting cloned. In addition, while the cloner is cloning someone, it lessens all the cooldowns on the Gene Tech console and increases how many materials are passively gained every second. This all comes at the cost of increasing how long it takes to finish the cloning process. The monkey pen nearby is also home to a number of monkeys and a locker with electropacks, remotes for said electropacks, and blindfolds. Using wacky corporate super science, you could uplift them into humanhood and use them for a funny haha. -ha. Or just to find more mutations. Monkeys are nowhere near as useful as they used to be, but if you're looking for a particular mutation and can't get it from the crew for whatever reason, you could try finding it in the monkey. Now before you monkey around in the monkey DNA business, keep a few things in mind. Never leave the door to the monkey enclosure open. Once you're through, close it to prevent monkeys getting into the operating theater or genetics lab. This is important, as once they get in there, they're likely to pick up staple guns or toolboxes. Not only does this make their attacks against you more lethal, but it means they're able to now break the glass separating you from them. Restrain your monkey. There are lots of ways to do this, but the easiest for genetics is to just use a blindfold. Blindfolds will prevent monkeys from attacking you and make them stand still. You can simply click on a monkey while holding a blindfold with your intent set to head to attempt to blindfold the monkey. You'll get interrupted if you move or the monkey moves too far away from you. Blindfolds can be found in the animal control lockers in your lab and in the monkey pen. It's best to put your restraining item on the monkey while in the monkey enclosure, then use pull to bring it into the genetics lab, as you risk it escaping your grasp and picking up something from medbay on the way. Putting the restraining item on is annoyingly finicky, as they are likely to move away before you complete the action. But if you stand so that the monkey is between you and the wall, you should be able to do it before it moves away. Whatever you do, don't grab the monkey until you're back in the lab and the doors are closed, as other monkeys will attack and mob you. I am the hunter. I am the redeemer. I am Friendboard. The tale of my rise to glory begins in the white wastes of Med Bay in Claw Map 2. My quest was arduous but necessary to ensure the survival of the station's people. A pestilence was creeping across the station, a menace with an insatiable hunger that plagued innocent travelers simply trying to get their department. It was my self-sworn task to hunt them down one by one and drive.
Monkeys will generally stop attacking you once you get into critical condition. So after you've been beaten senseless, you have some time to limp to a porta nanomed or nanomed and heal yourself with styptic powder patches or at least find a medical doctor who can. For the gene puzzle, each gene has its own randomly generated sequence that you can complete to manually activate it instead of using an activator. Really, it's a minigame, so it's completely fine if you just ignore it. But if you want to try, completing the code is simple. Fill in the blank spots with their corresponding letter. A will always be paired with T, and G will always be paired with C. If both letters are missing, just fill it in until you guess correctly. The gene sequence checker upgrade is almost necessary if you're going to activate them manually, as it'll tell you when you guess a pair correctly without having to get everything correct at once. If you enjoyed the video, you ought to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps me out a lot, and it gets these tutorials out there for more people to learn from. The link to the wiki page for genetics is in the description. Among other things, you'll find a list of all the chromosomes and mutations.